A place to inform. A place to understand. A place to relax. Welcome to the break room. Welcome, welcome everybody to a very special episode of The Break Room. I'm your host, Timothy Adams, and with me, I'll just tell you about this guy right here. Man needs no introduction in the world. However, I am going to have him uh, introduce himself for, I mean, you want me to introduce himself? You want me to introduce I mean, it's fine. We're going I mean, on hey, way. man, it's up to you. Okay, so we got my family here, uh, my cousin. You know, he has many, many, many titles. Uh, he has been Mr. MVSU here at Valley. He graduated from here with a bachelor's in mass communication emphasis in broadcasting. And he also went to University of Memphis where he got his master's. Uh, just to remember, it was, it was, what was it again? Um, in film and video production. Film and video production. I mean, without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my cousin John McCall the third. Not the first, not the second, third. So I think the whole little the waving at the camera thing is just too much, man. <laughs> All right, man. So first off, welcome to the break room. Well, thank you. Thank yes, you sir, for having Yes, me. sir. Yes, sir. So uh, really, first question I want to start off with asking you, uh, as you know, this is the you know place where we just sit and we just have conversations. So if this goes to the left, it's to be expected because we've done it before, you know. So my first question would really be, man, what really was your – uh, inspiration, I guess you could say, to do filming, to want to be in the film industry? Mm. Okay, so for the longest as I can remember, I've always been an artist. And I was an artist when I didn't even know I was an artist. I was uh, always drawing. Uh, my dad was, he was into comics since he was little. He used to sit and you know, make comics and stuff like that. From, based off of like pure memory. He'll just go right into it and just draw a whole comic looking like a professional comic. I'm like, how did you do that at like 12 years old? <laughs> but from then on, you know, he used to always take us to the movies. I mean, we used to, like me and my brothers, we used to always be excited just to go to a theater. Just, you know, to have that warm smell of popcorn, you know, in the air. And then, uh, you know, just the cool environment, you know, and just, just the anticipation for a project that you haven't seen, you know, like on screen. And a lot of times we would always go and see like superhero movies like Marvel's, like um, Marvel projects like Spider-Man. And it was the first big movie I can remember going to see. Oh, and man. the anticipation, I was so excited just to go and see it, man. You know, just having butterflies and just like this energy just there. Man, I feel it, bro. I feel it. And like since then, man, I just really just been into it. And as the years went by, I saw that uh, I liked something about the way that things were kind of like framed on screen. Right. It looked like uh, like I didn't know I had a love for cinematography before I knew what cinematography was. Right. I liked just how people appear on screen. I liked lighting. I liked uh, the way the characters were framed, you know, composition, right. stuff like that. I didn't even know anything about. But man, just to continue going with it, and when I went to uh, you know, at church and stuff, you know, I always put us, you know, as African Americans, <laughs> we'd be, you know, in front of the stage all the time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because mama and you know, grandma, they say that you gotta, you know, go up there and. It's like, mama, sing, sing, sing something for granny. Sing something for granny. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we just Easter plays, uh, Easter uh, speeches in front of the end, we started doing a lot of you know, uh, plays, black history plays, and just a lot of different skits that we were doing growing up. And I guess it just got bit by the bug and I went from there. Yeah, yeah. We've actually, you know, now that you mention it, um, you know, both of you, me and you have had a similar, similar type of upbringing, especially being in the black church and everything. And I find it so interesting that we both came from that, but we uh, both branched into you know, our own thing, even though it's around the same thing, you know, with me being a, a TV production assistant, you being, you know, uh, um, a director, essentially, because, you know, you graduated with the expertise, uh, which, which, you know, brings me to my next question, man. You know, you, these are your stomping grounds, you know, your alma mater, uh, you know, alma mater, M good old MVSU, you know, and, and not only are these your stomping grounds, but you were Mr. Valley over here, man, not too long ago. So how was that experience, you know, going from, you know, 
just a regular student to being the guy when it comes to Valley during your tenure? Uh, it started with a love for uh, the student body. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always found myself, I've always been an encouraging person growing up. You know, I've always uh -huh. cared about somebody else a little bit more than myself. Okay. Always uh, attended, you know, I always attempt and try. You know, this is my goal is always to put God first right. in everything that I do. Right, right. And a lot of times I saw students who, you know, were hurting here and there. And I'm not talking about physical hurting, but I'm talking about like in the terms of, uh, needing just a listening ear, you know, needing right. somebody, you know, just to talk to. Right. And the God in me always said, you got to go in, talk to this person. You got to, you know, just cheer this person up. Somebody looking sad and something, you know, you want to come out. I felt like I had to be the person to say, hey, excuse me, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Hmm. And from there, you know, I was always, I had this, you know, I got this bubbly personality. You right, know, I was walking right. around, like, I was speaking to everybody. Hey, what's going right. on, man? Hey, what up, what up? You know? And, just all of that kind of like tied into each other and um, people kind of, you know, they, I feel like, you know, that, you know, make somebody feel so, like good mm -hmm. just to have somebody just simple as just saying hi to you. Right. That'll brighten somebody's day. Right. So just to answer your question, all of those elements kind of led to me seeking something that was uh, bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Uh, MVSU was something that, you know, that was definitely there to touch the, you know, the student body and definitely something that not only would allow me to, you know, get, you know, networking opportunities within this field, you know, that we were just talking about, but it was an allowance to truly care about, you know, the students and truly do what I want to do and cater back to uh, not only the student body here, but, you know, just the youth or you know just generations that's below me touching, you know touching that's the young people yeah. touching the young people you know yes. and that's that's my heartfelt one of my heartfelt you know passions right, right. Uh, a pastor once told me when i was uh i don't know 15 16 mm -hmm. you know when they had an altar call he called me up there and uh when i went up there he touched my belly he said that uh, you're gonna be somebody that's gonna touch other young people and you're gonna bring them into the fold right and like i didn't understand how <laughs> Like what the pastor meant by that, you know, because a lot of times you can have a lot of anxiety, especially when the pastors start to prophesizing over you and you don't know what they're about to say. Right, but at that right. moment when he said that, I was like, mm. it is one of those moments, man, where like you're called. But at the same time, when you're called, you have this it's kind of like this obligation. But at the same time, you don't know how you're going to fulfill this obligation. So it's like. What do I do with that? Where do I go from there? Like, what direction do I take it in? But you seem to handle it pretty well, man. Right, it's, it's all God, man, honestly. I have to give him credit for all of this. It's when you try to, uh, even if you try to hide from something that you're destined to be or destined to do, it's gonna come, you know, without your say so. Regardless, like, uh, there's been scenarios when I was in high school where I tried to not be in the spotlight you know i'm not trying to say that i'm somebody who wants to be you know constantly in the spotlight but just giving a scenario where i was always uh i tried to you know hide away from uh acknowledgement or hide away from uh being i guess you can say a somebody you know i wanted to be somebody in the shadows but i guess god said and he did he said otherwise you know people started to bring my name up in a lot of places and in places in rooms that I didn't even, you know, I weren't even in, you know, people was talking about it. And that's something, you know, I feel like everybody, you know, have a uh, right to. And I think that's something that God has for everybody. You know, everybody's meant to be somebody. So you should never really just, you know, hide away or try to uh, dim your light, you know, and that's uh, a lot of things that, you know, to cater to what we were just talking about you know, with um, being in the positions. I, uh, just to, you know, to kind of piggyback back off of your last question, um, I had a light and that light was not a um, arrogant light. I tend not to be arrogant in anything I do. It was a light that uh, wanted to see somebody else do a little bit better than me. And that's something that, you know, I try to use as my monster moving on like forward and anything I do. 
because there's people out there that's just as talented as I am and more, if not more, like this, you, this gentleman right here <laughs> in front of me, like he got much more, he has so much potential. And um, just allowing the student bodies to shine, you know, in a way, and being a representative that not only uh, wants to, you know, do not want the spotlight, but want to share it, you know, with everybody. And I think that was something a lot of people, you know, saw, you know, when I was running. I was saying that, look, I hear you. You know, that was one thing I was running, like answer the call, vote John McCall. That was my, uh, that was my tagline. Yeah, I but, yeah. but I was, too. Yeah, yeah, you were. I, I remember the exact frame. <laughs> we we gonna talk about it over there. Yeah, but uh, it's the idea of just you know listening, you know, hearing somebody else, and you know making sure that their voice mattered. You know, that was something that I ran on. And that's something when I got into office that I tried to uh, stand on, you know, make sure I listen to people. I remember it was one young man, we were sitting down and he was talking to me about something, and, you know, and I'm not to share, you know, his, what he was talking about, but when we left that conversation, he was, he felt a lot better, you know, just because I listened, you know, I wasn't trying to take over the conversation. I gave him, you know, whatever advice I could give him, but it's the ideal of sharing a platform, the ideal of listening was the reason why, you know, I guess I am where I am, where I am. You know, the, the interesting thing about this, you know, is that the goals and the, the dreams you wanted to achieve, they're still within reach. So it's like you're fighting and striving for that and at the same time using this film knowledge that you have now, which, you know, I feel like it's giving other people opportunities as well. You know, which leads me into another question that I have for you, man. Now, recently, we've been, you know, working together on some projects, yeah. you know, and uh, we've been in a couple of your your short films, but also, man, you know, you, I, want you, I want you to kind of dive into that a little bit, you know, with, the, with your whole, you know, getting your, as they say, getting your feet wet in the whole filming industry. I want you to, I want you to talk about that. Okay. Wait, like how far you want me to go back? <laughs> well, let's let's see. Um, I guess we can start from the beginning. Might as well start. All great stories have a beginning, so start from the beginning. So my first film, uh, college, out here, um, twenty seventeen. So in twenty sixteen, we had this uh, talent show, and um, as you know, you wanna make a name for yourself when you first get out here. You're gonna uh, take risks. So me and a friend of mine so from uh, Indiana, he was uh, in the same classification I was at the time, and uh, we was like, okay. You know, we had met that summer and everything during uh, orientation, and we got cool. And we was like, oh, well, we finna make a name for ourselves. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I bet. You know, so we took the, you know, they had, the talent show was coming up, and the talent show was gonna be something where we had to stand in front of, you know, the whole audience and just talk to, uh, you know, just do whatever talent that we was gonna do in front of a big mass uh, group of people. And that can be nerve wracking. So we were like, man, we finna, uh, we finna take a challenge, man. We finna do this thing. So we wrote our name down on a sheet of paper, and uh, I wrote this poem titled, The Contrast Between a Boy and a Man. And when I staged it, you know, when I went on stage and actually uh, performed it, um, it got some uh, good, you know, reviews from people. And from then on, you know, I was always, like I was telling you a few months ago, I was always interested in, you know, the arts, the filmmaking aspect of everything. So I was like, well, this is something that I can take and actually create a film, my first film out of. So what I did was I dressed up in a uh, tie and some big bulky uh, glasses <laughs> and played an older version of myself. And then I also played a younger version of myself. So basically, you know, to kind of give you some uh, some ground uh, to what the film was about, it was about, you know, uh, an older version of yourself trying to point a younger version in a better direction. And it's coming like with the uh, ideal of uh, coming uh, down your nerves or coming down anger or uh, learn how to control it because the older version and you would know how to handle a situation better than the younger version and you would. So it was really about that whole dynamic and then that range of those two, you know, all that emotion, you know, going back and forth. Even to that, uh, that slap that I don't know if I'm proud of. <laughs> or putting it in the film. I mean, yeah, like, I remember watching it the first time. You, it was, you know, it was like, 
the man got to slap the taste out of his own mouth. I was you know, like, okay. but the thing is though, Tim, yeah, like sometimes you have to do yourself like that, metaphorically. <laughs> metaphorically, you have to take uh, you know, slap the taste out of your own mouth <laughs> to like, and basically what I'm saying is you gotta take, grab yourself, like look in the mirror and say, look, look, I gotta calm down. I mean, I gotta take that back a notch, you know, because maybe I'm doing something that's just a little too much. It's not like the inner, you know, talking to yourself. Sometimes, you know, putting yourself in a, a better direction. Right. If that makes any sense. Right. Internally. You know, so, yeah, that was my first short film. I think I got maybe like 200 some views on uh, YouTube from it. Great start for a video. Yeah. yeah. And it was ba it was all word of mouth, you know. I was just walking around promoting. <laughs> I was like, I walking to people in the library. I said, Hey, I got this uh, short film that I'm doing. Like, you know, it's going to be on YouTube yeah. now. You know, check it out. You know, they yeah. just talking to people in the cafeteria. Hey, 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 I know you're eating and everything, but I got this short film. You know that I did. Folks, you should folks sitting there eating their chicken, and he just saying, Hey, man, uh, why are you chomping on that chicken? Why don't you pull up YouTube, look at my my short film? You know, you don't have <laughs> something to entertain you, so why you eat? <laughs> right, right. But man, yeah. Then yeah. from uh. Then a year later, a year or two later, I ran into you, and I saw somebody you know who was really talented, and I'm like, man, I got to put this man to something. <laughs> so you know that's when we had the whole conversation about the invisible uh, music video, because yeah, uh, yeah. Miss Norton at the time she was like, well, y'all gonna have to shoot a music video for y'all midterm uh, video or something. I sure remember that. I remember that because like you were hitting me up. No, no, no. You ran into me. I don't know if you ran into me in the somewhere. We were somewhere working on it. You and someone brought the idea to me. I think we ran to each other. I think it was the library. No, it was cafeteria. Cafeteria. Yeah. Now, mind you, mind you guys, this is before we found out we were cousins. There's a whole backstory to that that we'll eventually get to. But like, we met in the cafeteria. He was like, "Hey, I got this idea for." Uh, Cause I think I had just put out the single for yeah. Invisible. I was going under a different name at the time. You know, I won. I won. Uh, my artist name is Javaris, but like my my original name was Halo. Yeah. And I promise you, it, I I was like, uh, I said, all right. I said I was gonna do it, and we we'd sit there, record that music video, like go shots about five or six, seven, eight, nine shots. Yeah, even in the rain. Even in the rain, <laughs> we ain't gonna get to, we ain't, we ain't gonna touch <laughs> on that <laughs> just <laughs> yet. Okay. Just yet, we might swing. We might keyword might. So that way, I don't look stupid when I edit this later. Uh, <laughs> might swing back around to it. But uh, one thing I do notice, man, with each project that you did, the quality had got better and better and better. I mean, from the contrast between the boy and the man to even the, the other project that I'm waiting for you to discuss, you know, uh, we, we, we got about two of them, two more of them that you did here before you dipped out of here. Did about two more of them. All right. Yeah, go ahead, and talk, go ahead and talk about it, man. The camera's on you, man. See which one you talking about, though, first. Uh, talking about the corner that fades. Uh, the corner that fades and the uh, highway of the yeah, lights. I had actually <laughs> forgot about that project. Yeah. Uh, Fading Corners. Fading Corners, so, let's talk about it. All right, so Fading Corners was a project about um, the ideal of somebody, you know, leaving out of a corner or fading away, you know, from uh, somebody who was not, you know, positive in your life, um, kind of fading away. And metaphorically, we did that with the terms of somebody, you know, kind of like physically fading away from your, your story, from, you know, your life. And we had three central characters. We had, uh, I think his name was Michael. We had Paris. I remember Paris. And we had uh, Mr. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, he was uh, the professor and he had a daughter. So the whole story really revolved around him and him trying to uh, convince his uh, family that um, they need to kind of like leave. You know, he had got this job offer and he was really trying to work with his marriage and everything and trying to make it work. But then we had the two other central characters, uh, Michael and Paris, who coming from different places. Uh, Michael, he had just gotten offered to me a uh, basketball player, you know, at the university. And I think we was, I think we had uh, staged it at Mississippi Valley. You know, yeah, so yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah, a player at Valley and um, he was from South Central. You know, I know you got a whole, you know, joke with that, but <laughs> we ain't gotta talk about that joke, but uh, joke. it was an Oscar winning line. It was an Oscar winning line, he just said, the professor said, Where you young man, where are you from? And what'd you what'd you say? South Central. And I repped it. <laughs> so he was uh, repping <laughs> South Central. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is very good trip down on that line. <laughs>
I promise, I, I tripped out over the line for like a good week or so. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, uh, maybe yeah, it was that. about two weeks. Yeah, maybe about, two weeks. about two weeks. Yeah, I'd say it was about two weeks. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, 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 South Central. So was, every time I seen her, I was like, Oscar went in line, South Central. But um, they came from two, like it was like two opposite ends of the uh, spectrum. Right. You, know, you had Paris who came from like a rich upbringing, and she was trying to fit in with her friend. But now she was at a school, you know, that she claimed weren't, you know, up to her criteria. So it was about her kind of like learning how to uh, be more humble. Right. So her fading corner came from her friend leaving her world. You know, her friend who she really didn't need leaving her world. And then we had Michael who had a friend who wanted to, Mike came from like a, uh, like a uh, rough background, you know, criminal kind of like activity background where they was trying to get him involved with things that he didn't really need to be involved with, you know, like stealing and stuff like that. But when he got this opportunity to go, you know, play ball, he saw a way out. So he used that as his way out. But in fading corners, his friend came back to see him play, and he wanted to bring him back into that world. But he was like, well, I can't do this no more. So his fading corner was losing that friend who was really not, you know, healthy for him in the beginning. Yeah. So basically it was a story about um, persevering, you know, in the right direction, regardless of what, you know, others say or what others uh of the people who leave you when you're trying to right. better yourself. Right, right. You know, a lot of times God will put you in that position where right. you know, sometimes you got to cut off people who are not, you know. They're not benefiting you. Right. Yeah, man, I, I, I this, you know, I, the reason why I had you talk about those early films, man, because, you know, we, we about to take a little jump, you know, because we're going we to jump. We're going to circle back. We're going to circle back around to the. the uh, put your seatbelt on. Go ahead. Buckle up. You know, <laughs> no, but we're going to talk about, uh, I really want to talk about the movie, uh, the short film that you put out, uh, one of the recent short films that you've been working on, um, that I don't know if it's out yet, but you know, it'll be out tomorrow. Yeah, I want you to, but I want you to talk about it. Uh, talk, just, just describe it and, and, and talk about it, you know. So the project he's referencing is titled Act to Look. And it was my thesis project at uh, the University of Memphis. And I always, um, I, I came up with the concept on my way home from uh, Memphis one day. And, uh, and this, I think it's like a year long project. The project been in the works for a year before, prior to me actually filming and writing it. So I fell in love, you know, going, I was going off the hype of uh, Malcolm and Marie. You know, we wrote a lot of, you know, different projects and we talked about, you know, the plot of Malcolm and Marie a lot. But I really fell in love with the ideal of diving into a director and an actress's relationship. And I was thinking about a, a method actress or a method actor and their mind and their process. And what if they were vulnerable, so vulnerable that they didn't feel comfortable being who they were, but using the character that they was playing as their escape. And if you think about that, it's really unhealthy to live in because you're in a world where you're not expressing who you are. And then, especially, and then take a narcissistic director and add him to the equation. Now you're feeling like you're kind of trapped. So, you know, not to give too much away, um, the project is a project about self-love. It's about individuality within a relationship, the importance of another person um, and their partner truly seeing each other for who they are yeah. and not uh, trying to control the situation, not saying I got my own agenda, you got your own agenda, and this is just how life is. You know, that's not a relationship. A relationship is supposed to be a partnership, not a, you know, sole proprietorship. You know, like I cannot be with you if uh, I have not listening or seeing you if that makes any sense so act of love it was it was a great like the story like the writing it was uh really good i got a chance to workshop with a lot of people i actually got a chance and i'm blessed with this opportunity to workshop it with craig brewer who is the director of uh, hustle and flow with yeah. terrence howard yeah he workshopped the script with me uh back a week or two before we actually filmed it i think back in february and, you know, he gave me some pointers about it. He was talking about the importance of a spine, having a spine in the movie. 
and the spine is basically uh, a backbone of the movie, like a line or something that kind of tells you what the whole project is going to be about. In every good movie, he said that there's always, you know, a line somewhere that give you a general idea of the theme of a movie. So he talked about that. Then I workshopped it with a lot of my other professors. I got one professor named uh, David Goodman. He was uh, an NYU grad and he was a cinematographer. He worked up the script with me. Uh, a good, another professor of mine is Professor uh, Marty Lang. He actually had the opportunity to uh, produce a movie with Ava DuVernay, director Selma. So he worked up it with me, and uh, it was a great process. You know, talking to uh, you know from producing it, getting all the funds together, to actually going out there and you know finding the places and the locations for it. I think I went to about three different Airbnbs talking to them before I came across the Airbnb that we found. And they was, you know, all for us filming there. But you know, a lot of Airbnbs had their criteria and everything, you kind of have to respect right. it, you know, so. The process of it was uh, phenomenal. Uh, we went out there, you know, I met the actors and the actress, you know, who I uh, knew of from previous uh, colleagues' films, you know, and kind of you know, reached out to them and said, you know, would you be interested in being a part of my project? And, you know, and of course, when they said yes, we went into the next process of uh, workshopping it, you know, and uh, not workshopping it, but um, doing table reads and, you know, going through what the characters represented and me giving them like uh, homework, basically, to go and kind of like study you know, for those characters. Like I gave, uh, I remember Ariel, uh, who played Norma, the main character. I told her, you know, your characters is a mix between Zendaya's, uh, Mal I mean, Marie, and uh, Whoopi Goldberg's uh, from The Color Purple, uh, yeah. Silly, you know, it was a mix between it. But I was telling her about the vulnerability, you know, really capturing the vulnerability aspect where you uh, are trying to break free or something, but you are kind of like uh, trapped in something. Mm -hmm. And of course it gave uh, John Jonathan uh, Stewart, this, you know, he, um, I'm about to say this is a stage name, but you know, he goes by Jonathan Stewart. Uh, he, the actor who plays James, I gave him a similar, uh, you know, person to kind of like model his character after, you know, uh, John David, um, and his Malcolm from Malcolm and Marie. I told him basically, you know, study that, study Adam Driver from uh, A Marriage Story, uh, and just kind of like get deeper into a, uh, a narcissistic mindset, but not so narcissistic that you are, uh, um, one dimensional, more of a narcissistic that it's a, I don't see my narcissism. It's a, um, I truly, genuinely believe you are wanting what we have here. It's like, cause you know, people don't want to say they're the bad guy, you know? So he was in a sense where I don't completely understand, but his complexities, you know, kind of painted a different picture than what he thought of himself. Right. You know, so, yeah. So, act the love, it drops tomorrow. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's, that's, that's great, man. Um, man, all these projects that you made, <coughs> and then to go to University of Memphis, and then to get that, that knowledge, that extra knowledge, extra experience, extra field experience, in that project and in that process, it's really admirable. Um, and we're gonna circle back around the valley real quick. Um, because I know you graduated with a, with a bachelor's in mass communication, but to come back so many years later and see the progress that your alma mater has made, like regardless of whether those directions succeeded or they got halted, like like what what is your take on the progress that Valley made so far? Well, you know I always get love for the Valley. Always. Let's go. I gotta start with that. I always have love for the Valley. Always got Anything, that love. anywhere where they, you know, have some type of uh, improvement, right. especially in enrollment, you know, that's one thing I'm gonna get on in a second. But anywhere that they have like one little small improvement, that's a clap in my book, you know, I gotta, you know, clap up there, you know, cause I have right. to applaud it. Because it's beautiful, man, you know, to see where we started from as a university and to see where we are now. You yeah. Know, that's, the little things are something that you should, you know, celebrate. Simple things. But, you know, this year, just seeing the band size, and uh, alone, it's something that you know I was excited about, you know, because the enrollment increased. You know, we went up. Like right. that means that we're moving in a positive direction. 
And just look at the studio. You were telling me here that, you know, y'all have a lot of uh, new programs. You know, you got, you know, channels that's opening up. You know, y'all have, like, new equipment, you know, things of that nature, you know, the different, you know, you know, things when it comes down to uh, performing, you know, like with the uh, Valley players, y'all uh, got a lot of uh, innovative ideals that y'all are working on that you told me about. Right. And just those, like, little small the nuggets right there, just something that I got to, you know, clap up, you know, I apply for. It's, it's beautiful, man. Right, you know, And right. Uh, just seeing it and um, continuing to, you know, want to give back and doing what I'm, you know, trying to do in my mission. Right. It's uh, something that is, uh, I just think it's, it's something that is um, admirable. It's something that um, I think is going to go to new heights. That makes any sense. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like Val is going to new heights, though. I feel like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like, even if it's a, a turtle climb, it's still making progress. You know, you know, it may not always be the rocket ship, may not always be, you know, flash. We getting there as fast as possible, but we're getting there. You know, um, you know, I was ex like when I started this this talk show, you know, with the with the break room, I was like real excited about it and everything. The opportunity to just have a talk show that you know. People on that, people on campus can know about, and how we can have our own, you know, little place where we can sit down, we can talk, we can have conversations, we can get into these discussions about different topics and such. And I know today the topic is really, I know, surrounding you and everything in your career and such, you know, man. But it's, it just goes to show you being a product of Valley, you know, being a uh, <laughs> like uh, Miss Bayman so elegantly said, a proud byproduct of MVSU. You know, to, to be to be that and then to still come back and be able to pour into like students when you get an opportunity to and still be able to see the potential and the growth. It's it's truly admirable, man. You know. Uh we gon we gon we gon we gon circle back around. Oh we oh you thought I forgot, we gonna circle around. <laughs> We, we gonna hit that. We gonna. I wanna talk about. We gonna shake. We gonna shake out. Okay. Yeah. You know, but uh, no, but seriously, uh, what I wanna do is briefly, um, you know, as we're, um, you know, talking more, the, the conception of Leopard Highway. I want. I want. I want to get into. I want to get into it, man. We're we're talking about Valley era, Valley era, Valley era, era Leopard Highway. And really, what was your, I really want to know, what was your inspiration behind, you know, not only just, you know, let's start with the name first, Leopard Highway. What, were, what gave you the inspiration to name the film Leopard Highway? I, I really want to know. All right, so Leopard Highway. Okay, so I got I to gotta go all the way back home, back to home. <laughs> So, of course, my mama decorated my room, uh -huh. and, you know, like when I was staying with, you know, with them. And, uh, and, you know, I still stay with them, you know, but, you know, I'm back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back and forth, man. But, I got you. Uh, you know, uh, they, you know, my mom, you know, decorating is her thing. You know, everything that she do is her thing. And um, she had this poster, well, not this poster, this picture on the top of my bed of a cheetah. I think it was a cheetah. Like, it's a big, long picture of a cheetah. <laughs> And uh, I can remember when we had to actually do the Leopard Highway project, and uh, that project, uh, I was uh, sick. I was really sick, you know, that weekend. You know, I was, like, very, very sick, man. And um, stayed in my bed for uh, days and looked at that poster. <laughs> and uh, it came to me, you know, when we were doing something like, hmm. I don't know where it came from. I said it came from God. Uh, <laughs> leopard Highway, you know, like Leopard Highway, and I'm like, okay. Like God just peeked from the heavens. Yeah, it's Le Leopard Highway. Leopard Highway, <laughs> just talking about here, but, you know, it came from nowhere, just, Leopard Highway. Yeah. But as we was just talking, me and my pops, you know, we were just talking about the, uh, the ideal of, uh, you know, the conception of it. And Leopard Highway had the meaning of, well, first you got to break it down both, uh, both terms. You know what a leopard are, you know, it's a, of course, a, a nocturnal animal. And uh, a lot of nocturnal creatures uh, hunt at night. And that means that they don't sleep. <laughs> Thus, or when they do sleep, they sleep during the day. But with that being said, you can take the metaphor and say that they are going full force for whatever they want to do. And they're not going to give up on it, even if it's at night, you know. <laughs> 
highways are transportation of vehicles or avenues to get to from one destination to the next destination. So Leopard Highway being uh, the organization, you know, within once we get into the storyline, it represented somebody on a path to success by any means necessary. Hmm. Like they're gonna, you know, do whatever they have to do to get to where they need to go. So that was, you know, the term Leopard Highway meant. Now, Valley Editions of Leopard Highway, we talked about, um, we had three essential characters. Right. We had Ricky. Right. We had Howard. Uh. And we had Valeria. Uh. Ricky played by yours truly. And hey, how you doing? Howard played by <laughs> yours truly here. <laughs> this guy, me. <laughs> and uh, Valeria by, you know, a good colleague of ours. Yep. And they uh, were approached by an organization by the name of Leopard Highway. Uh. And their organization promoted you know students for you know they put them on paths to get them to wherever their goal was in college by any means necessary so would you say would you say leper Howard was more of a like an organization or would you, would you say it's more like a uh, you know uh, a frat or a sorority you know that I'm going to leave up to the inference from my <laughs> the inference of you know yeah, like, like, because when we first put this out and we, we, we saw it, a lot of people assumed, I think, I think it was a couple people that came up to me and assumed that we were like throwing shade at, at, the, yeah. at, the, at the, you know, the societies on campus, you know, we, you know with the, the, our, our fabled, our, our famous and, and lovable Greek society. We thought we were throwing shade at it, and we were like, no, we're, we're, not, we're not doing that. We're, we're, we're not. We literally were just talking about a club organization that got heavy fundage you know, and just rose to power. And, and they've been our thing, man. We have been sitting around, playing around with that thing, trying to figure out how to enhance it. You know, because we, always, we always had thought, because originally we were just going to leave it alone. Right. Like, once we put it out, it's like, yep, it's out there. We'll leave it alone. The storyline, yes, it's ambitious. We're not going nowhere else with it. So, so this, we, uh, this is an official announcement. Oh, no, it's not an official announcement. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just saying. We, 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 I told we, you, Valley Arrow. We're not revealing too, too much. All right, All right. So we, we, we speak it too much. We're going to keep that, uh, yeah, spoil the territory. Go, go back reverse. Go back reverse. So we're going to jump to another we'll project, back. and we're going to just avoid talking about I, I'm just, you know. I know, I know, I know. But what, what I really want to talk about now, you know, and this will be one of the last films that we talk about, but I want to talk about game. And I know game was really our, it was me and your first time really just, I guess, diving into the emotional spectrum of what, our, our projects can really produce. Um, you know, I remember, I remember the the call, and we were sitting there trying to figure out, like, okay, how are we going to get this whole project going and off the ground? And I want you to kind of just very briefly just elaborate on not not only the story of game, but also what the message, what the underlying message is that that it carried. Okay, so. Game centered around civil sibling uh, rivalry, and um, your character was a character who was uh, a younger brother to uh, my character. And your character was named Sam, and my character's name was Paul. Right. Um, the script came from uh, a writer by the name of uh, Joseph Argon, mm -hmm. and he writes a lot of scripts and he puts them up on uh, like just on the way up, you know, for people, all filmmakers, you know, playwrights or you know actors, actresses to taking you know and do what they please with it and i saw uh in i was in cinematography at the moment no i was in motion picture one and we had an assignment to shoot a short film mm -hmm. and uh, i saw an opportunity to you know use a script about you know sibling uh kind of like a sibling rivalry and you know just kind of like uh pursued it the script the original script wasn't really about uh brothers the original script was about uh, two friends who lived in an apartment, you know, together, and one they had an argument about something. But we, when we started, you know, collaborating, we took that ideal and we dove, dived a little deeper, making them brothers and uh, making it a story about uh, truly understanding what your brother is going through 
it, it got to that point, you know, because, you know, you can remember our performing it kind of got intense, you know, when it was, you know, when we was in it. You know, you know, you said you had to go to levels and I had to go to levels, you know, crying and the, the whole nine yards. But that's real, you know, yeah. that's real, man. You know, uh, sibling rivalry exists oh, yeah. and it does not feel good to a lot of, you know, the people who's in it, you know, yeah. and I'm and, uh, you know, I pray for those, you know, yeah. those people and um, I have uh, my heart goes out, you know, to the people who's like dealing with it. Right. But right. just by making a movie about it, it's sparking a conversation within, you know, different households. And those conversations do something. They talk, you know, they make, you know, if it's only one person, you know, just like they say in church, if it's, like if it touches one heart and it causes them to kind of like look in the mirror and then change, then you've done your job. And I think that's like one of the hearts of the game, you know, trying to attack that sibling, you know, rivalry thing within households. Uh, one parent favoring another parent. I mean, not one parent favoring another uh, sibling over the other one. And then that sibling looking at them and like, uh, you know, wanting to live up to a, uh, a plaque or live up to a, uh, a pedestal that another sibling is put on causes a lot of unhealthy, you know, feelings and a lot of emotion there. And that's something that within a lot of communities that we don't talk about, you know. We just go on to the next thing, you know. We just we don't sit down and talk about, you know, what's going on with this brother or with that brother. Right. Yeah. Man, I've been enjoying it so far, you know. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, when it comes to your impact, your level of what you want to achieve when this is all said and done, when the curtain closes for the final time, or John McCall III, what what is it that you want to be remembered for? What do you what do you what is the mark you want to leave, not only on the world but also what impact? Do you want to leave on on us? You know, when it's all said and done. That's a uh, very very uh, complex answer no to give. No, 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 no. But um, <laughs> but to kind of answer your question though, my goal will always be to do what God wants for me. You know, in my life, and. A lot of times you got to go on a journey to kind of find it, find what your purpose is, what your calling is, where you meant to be in life. And sometimes, a lot of times you have to go through, uh, you know, I wouldn't say obstacles, but you have to go through life to experience things that God may be crafting a role for you to, you know, be what you're meant to be. And uh, a lot of times I've learned this, you know, through doing a lot of research, you know, because I went through a period of my life when I was trying to figure out who I was, right. trying to figure out where, I, where I'm meant to be, where I'm meant to go. Right. And a lot of times, that's what times I spent reading the Bible, you know, spent a lot of time alone, a lot of time uh, meditating, a lot of time praying, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, where I belong and trying to understand, you know, what God, you know, had for me and what, you know, the place I was at. And then, you know, I ran across this one thing that, you know, after doing a lot of um, back research, you know, on this one article, to, you know, just to prove its authenticity and everything. I saw where it said that a lot of times God give you uh, clues through um, his makeup of you. And with that being said, I knew I was an artist. I knew um, I loved cinematography. And a lot of times God also put people in your life that, you know, uh, Punch you in a direction. Mm-hmm. I can remember sitting in my bed. Um, this is towards graduation. You know, almost it was a couple months before graduation, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. You know, what career did I want to, you know, pursue when I went to college? And I know my dad. He was into uh, graphic design. He's still into that. But I was not in love with the idea of uh, designing things. You know, I have love for people, you know, who love the craft and everything, but to me, graphic graphic design was, you know, a lot, you know, two-dimensional. 
you know, I wanted something that was, you know, a little bit more uh, tangible where I can, you know, reach, you know, go outside of the box. And a lot of times the arts was something that people, you know, uh, frowned upon, especially in our community. And that's a true statement, you know, when you say you want to be an actor or you want to be a director. That is something that a lot of people say that is not possible. Right. You, you come from the South. You cannot be no actor. You're not going to find money in it. You know, but I remember vividly uh, my dad having this conversation with me. He told me, he like, well, why don't you be a director? I was like, like, Dad, I can't make no money in directing. He said, well, you never know unless you try. And, uh, and that kind of, like, leads me to uh, Ray Fisher, you know, uh, who played Cyborg, one of his statements in one of his interviews. And this is something that I kind of, like, live by, too. Uh, when he was decided he wanted to pursue acting, his mom said, well, what are you going to do for money? He said, well, Mom, I'm already at the bottom. He said, I can't go no further down. <laughs> the only direction I can go to is up. So with that being said, you know, a lot of things God will put you in place to be, you know, you just have to be, you know, faithful. And a lot of blessings I have came, you know, through my life, you know, as I started, you know, pursuing this career, you know, I was doing, I'm looking, I'm doing things that people, you know, have not done, you know, out here filming, you know, folks looking at me like, oh, kind of, you know, crazy, like, like what are you doing? <laughs> I'm walking around, he was like, like ready, set, and action, yo, yo, I'm going. <laughs> And people on top of the bridge like, man, y'all making a movie there that I want to be, you know? <laughs> At least I'm making a movie, you know, stuff like that. So um, that's trying to, you know, really just, you know, answer your question more. Um, the impact for, you know, this gen next generation, you know, that I want to leave, it's the impact of, um, of I can do it. Now, this is, that's a me thing, and this is something, uh, of course, like I said, I started this uh, by saying that, you know, I'm going to do what God you know, want, me to, want me to do, but I'm thinking just something that he had planted in me from, a, a, like, a boy, and especially, you know, with that prophecy, you know, that uh, the pastor, you know, kind of, like, prayed over me for, you know, with the ideal of uh, touching another generation. And at that time, I think he was talking about my generation, but... He may was talking about other generations, you know, and generations that you know, you know coming after me, and I've seen myself going in directions where I work with a lot of people who wants to pursue, you know, something of that avenue, but a lot of times they don't see how to do that, and um, by you know the, like the blessings that I've had so far, and then with me and my brother and my uh, dad, you know. Thank God, you know, what we just uh, started with McCall Productions, which is official now. Um, I'm going to be able to, you know, give a lot more opportunities to the Delta, to um, surrounding areas. I want to bring a lot of more films to the Delta because we, this is a place where filmmaking can happen, just like in, in Atlanta, how Tyler Perry did, you know, right. in Georgia. He saw an opportunity to do something and the same thing can happen here in Mississippi right. we have all the resources at this university right here you know we were talking about this you know before we have all the resources at this university here too and then at Jackson State and our neighboring you know HBCUs and now not only HBCUs but at you know at the PWIs we have a lot of resources and a lot of people who wants who can do things you know we have actors we have writers we have uh, future directors. We have uh, production assistants. We have so many resources. We just got to put it into play. Mm. And with that being said, you know, my goal is to be one of the ones who uh, give those opportunities. Mm. I'm working on a web series right now that, you know, I'm going to talk more, you know, with you all in the future about. But I want to involve, you know, the uh, mass communication department. Awesome. I want to reach out to... Uh, the students at you know the Votech in the um, Lafleur County Consolidated School District right. get them involved. I want to uh, get upper bound programs involved. You know I want to you know reach out to a lot of younger people because I've seen a lot of people who wants to get into you know this field. They just need you know that avenue to go for, right. and then that's just something that you know I want to start. So. Yeah, I think I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> uh, you did. You, you answered it and then kept going. 
Uh, but yeah, man, man, we we thank you so much for for taking time out, coming down here, and just spending time with us uh, today for this episode of the Break Room, man. It's truly, truly been an honor for you to, uh, for us to have you, you know. Um, and before we go, let the good people know where they can find you and where they can find your projects at. Okay, so uh, my YouTube channel right now is J Space McCall. McCall spelled with uh, a capitalized M, you know, lowercase C, capitalized C, A L L. J Space McCall uh, on YouTube. And uh, if you're looking for my picture, I'm just a person with a polite praying hands looking up you know, to the <laughs> sky, you know, with like a little white shirt and tie and uh, like glasses on. But uh, yeah, that's where you can find my YouTube. My Facebook is John McCall III. Instagram is J underscore McCall. I think, I think that's, I think think, yeah. But if not, just type in my name, you know, it should come up somewhere, you, you'll find me. But, you know, a lot of, I'm posting a lot about a lot of projects and uh, on Facebook especially, I'm sharing a lot of uh, resources. Um, there's the Indy Memphis Film Festival. We have Oxford Film Festival. We have a lot of film festivals here in Mississippi, in Memphis, and then uh, surrounding, and then even Atlanta, you know, just, it's a lot of places where, you know, it's giving you uh, opportunities for younger people to, you know, be involved. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to MVSU Break Room. We thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked this episode, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, we ask that you subscribe to our channel, MVSU Students Media Channel, to not only check out this episode, but other episodes of The Break Room we've done before. As I've stated, I've been Timothy Adams. He's been John McCall III. And until next time, take care of yourself and take care of each other. A place to inform place to understand, a place to relax. Welcome to the break room.